Hey guys, this is Sid Patel, CEO of Beverage Trade Network and USA Ratings, and we're live from San Francisco. I have Tim Marson here. He's a category buyer at wine.com, which is a leading wine retailer in America, and he also takes care of spirits there. You know, they have a spirit section, and we're gonna really talk about uh, you know, how, how their buying program works and how can spirits producers work with a giant retailer, online retailer like him. Tim, thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure, Sid. Great. See you. Let's go right into it. You know, uh, how can one get listed on wine.com? Well, there's a certain amount of, of process involved. I mean, essentially, uh, we operate in three states for spirits. That's where we're allowed to operate as a retailer. Uh, obviously, spirits you can't ship across state lines in the US, so we're restricted to intrastate sales only to direct to consumers. Um, but we are dependent on wholesalers to provide that. We are a three-tier e-commerce business, mm -hmm. so we're buying from wholesalers um, and. So for a product to be listed, it has to be listed with a wholesaler first. Understood. Uh, they essentially are the, the gatekeepers to the market. Um, we are effectively enablers in the sense that we try and make as many spirits as make sense, as we do with wine, uh, available to our customers uh, to have shipped direct to their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that case, do you work with each and every distributor if your goal is to have all kind of products on the website? We work with a lot, uh, some would say too many, uh, both large and small, but uh, we're constantly growing our, our vendor base, uh, which means setting up new wholesalers all the time. But uh, as long as they can uh, serve our needs in terms of delivery and service and expectations on that front, uh, then there's no real barrier to entry. Mm. I want to go on some behind the scene part here, right? So is this like a consignment model or do you stock every inventory that you're putting out there? Uh, no, we uh, hold inventory. Uh, we buy uh, as we ne as we need it, but it's not a consignment uh, okay. system because as soon as we take an order, we buy a buy a, a pack size, uh, and so that comes into our inventory, and then we sell that through until we need to re repurchase to to fulfill demand. Wow! So that is a lot of product. I mean, a lot of product in our warehouse, but uh, it's a very broad uh, but shallow assortment in the sense we rarely have, apart from the top sellers, of course, more than a pack size in stock but we have that across many thousands of products. And you take care of the packing and um, shipping part yeah, as well? Yeah, we do that ourselves, yeah. Got so us. obviously we uh, have to use FedEx or UPS uh, to ship those, but we uh, warehouse and uh, pack and, and sort and, and put the product onto mm. FedEx ourselves. So let's say if I was a supplier, you know, I would for sure not even bother pitching you you know, if you did not have a wholesaler, right, representing you. Yeah, so if you need to have an, if you're a non-US product, you need to have an importer, supplier, and wholesaler. But are you, are you working through people who you recommend and you're, they're clearing, like MHW, Park Street, and those kind of guys? There are a few people that we work with that use those clearing houses. Okay. Um, they're the exception rather than the rule. We, we tend to work with full, uh, full service wholesalers because that's, that's what works best with our model. Understood. So let's say, you know, now we'll go a little further here. Let's say I'm already represented in this distributor and they, we, we jointly we were able to get our listing in your, you know, wine.com, mm -hmm. for example. Now, I really want to uh, be on the top three items. I want to push, I want to promote, you know, uh, how do I set up a meeting with you? What kind of things I need to persuade you on? You know, what kind of support programs uh, you can discuss with me? And how do I sell more of my product on your website? I always like to tell people that we reflect customer demands in the marketplace. Uh, we are not necessarily a brand builder ourselves, um, but brands that are successful in the general market, so the work that you do as a supplier, as a producer, uh, out of the marketplace is reflected on sales on our site because mm. customers often uh, first come across your product, maybe in a bar, restaurant, hotel, whatever it is, uh, out in the general marketplace, but then it's like, well, I want to have a bottle of this at home. And mm. how do they do that? They buy it from, from wine.com. So um, that may sound like a kind of a, a negative approach in the sense that we're not creating demand, but there's only so much we can do to push I a understand. brand. Yeah, you can't hand online. sell people, right? And you, you don't want to, I mean, you, I, I guess you have to collect so much data and understand the consumer behavior uh, and then yes, do I mean, your buying. We, so it's really data-driven buying. Uh, it is to a degree. I mean, obviously, we like to have products on the site that are popular already. Okay. Um, we, we, there are plenty of, of items that we have that we call long tail or extreme long tail where we may only sell a, a pack size or two a year. Uh, that's not a problem for us as long as we're moving through that inventory. But there are obviously many others where we're selling lots of bottles, uh, and that reflects general customer demand. Um, but um, we want to have the best assortment as well as the largest assortment of both wines and spirits. Okay. 
give me five or six examples. Like one, one of the things that comes to my mind is when someone's searching on your website and they cannot find that particular product and no search result is shown, you know, uh, does that go back into your some to be considered buying thing or where you know that this were the unanswered search results? Yes, I mean, we uh, obviously have a huge assortment uh, already and we help people find what they're looking for, both in terms of uh, sort and search functionals on the site, but also crucially with live online chat feature with okay. recommendation specialists who are real people in real time helping people to find what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, but again, as you say, if, they're, if we don't have a product, we know what people are looking for because they're, they're using the search function and we also have reference products on the site. So even if more so with wine and spirits, but... Um, like buy similar products, you're going to show them. Yes, but uh, but also the, the point of those recommendation specialists is like, well, we don't have this, but here's something similar. Here's something I can recommend to you because mm -hmm. I know enough about the product to be able to, to, to advise you properly as a professional. Mm -hmm. What kind of other signals uh, do you, you know, take? Uh, let's say when, when do you call a supplier yourself that, hey, who's selling this? Uh, we're looking for, for items all the time. I mean, obviously, there are certain search tools out there in the industry to help us find a product with a wholesaler and supplier that, uh, that we're looking for. Um, but uh, they generally come to us um, because uh, we, well, obviously, we have we're time constrained, but also we have a, a huge assortment already. Mm. But uh, every so often, like at a competition like this, I'll come across something that's, that's fantastic and say, well, where can I find this? It's like, well, let's find out who the importer or supplier is, who the distributor by in the states where we work. Give me a little uh, on the packaging, on the, you know, like packaging for a retail and merchandising for retail is so different than an online, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe do you look for uh, a product that really shows well with color contrast online, you know, have great product pictures? Like what are the different things that you look for if you were comparing yourself with an off-trade buyer? Well, we obviously need uh, a lot of content from uh, from suppliers to, uh, to, to show their product in the best possible light. I mean... If you go to a bar, you'll see it on the back bar. We're not able to pick it up and look at the, look at it properly and look at the back and so on. Uh, whereas retail, that the whole idea is you can you can take it off the shelf and actually hold it in your hand. That's mm. not possible online, of course. So we have to replicate that by having the best quality and, and best quantity of images possible, to so that customers can really kind of dive into uh, the, the feel of the brand, look at the brand. But beyond that, we can also sell the story of the brand via the copy and the images and the video and the interviews and so on. Um, that really brings the brand story to life, which you can't do. You can't replicate that in, in traditional retail or mm. even in an on-premise situation. Mm, nice. Uh, you've seen, uh, like I'm sure looking at the volumes uh, wine.com does, have you seen that brands that have r amazing images, more content, get bigger conversions? Uh, we have. We, we, we have seen that. Um, it, it's it's, it's self-evident in a way, but uh, we have the data to show that the better uh, content uh, materials for brands do translate to enhanced sales. Okay, one last one. Uh, what is an example of a good content that can go on the website which can make users more interested in that? Press that buy button. Well, th think about what your kind of a brand, brand values are, what the story is, what sets you apart as a brand, and how do you best communicate that on the site? It could, as I say, it could be an image, it could be a, a short video, um, something that when uh, a customer is holding our app on their phone in, the, in their hand, it's like, what's going to immediately appeal to them uh, and how, what, what's going to translate your, your story and your brand equity to the customer.